without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the Love Life Legacy Podcast. Love Life Legacy Podcast. Love Life Legacy Podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a podcast. It's a podcast. Let me turn it up. Hey, hey. hey. Spit some bars over this beat, man. It's gonna go hard. Oh, one day I'ma spit some bars over this beat, man. And it's gonna go hard. Hey, one day I'ma spit some bars over this beat. And it's gonna go so hard. <laughs> oh man. What up, y'all? Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. We bike. We bike. We bike. All right. Now let me get my Charleston bar. Um, Oh, I got it on the I forgot that. I'm sorry. Let me go and cut that off. We are back. Uh, happy Sunday. Good to be back with y'all. Um, it's, it's, it's always refreshing to get back on this live. Uh, as you can see, I'm solo dolo for a second. Wifey got to handle some motherly duties upstairs with the kids or whatever. But that's all right. I mean, um, I think I can handle it enough to chop it up with y'all since, you know, I like to talk. And, uh, you know, you know, I, I won't say God bless me with the gift of gab, but I claim to be uh, a, a, a part of having the gift of gab. So <laughs> I feel like I can I can chop it up with y'all for, for a little second until, you know, mommy gets done with her duties. Man, how y'all doing, man? How y'all doing? You know, hit me up, whoever on the live, hit me up in the comments. Let me know how y'all doing. You know, what, what's going on with you? Something that may have been on your heart or on your mind that uh you know we can talk about um you know even though we have a list that we're going to be talking about you know just just let us know if you want us to share something or you want to share something with us and we can give a little insight uh you know that 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 we can uh tune in and and let you let you know exactly what we see in the perspective of where we come from um but you know this this week has been been okay this has been the first week back for me to be back at work um, you know, I, I missed the vacation already, man, being off is just, it's so great. You know, you got to go back to your responsibilities and your duties because, you know, we adults and adulting never stops. You know, it's just, it's crazy when you only get a short time in the year where you can consider that I'm off and I don't got to worry about the responsibilities of being an adult. Oh my God. I always tell my kids, man, listen, enjoy being young, enjoy adolescence, enjoy, you know, being a child and a teenager, because once you get on this side of the track, <laughs> you will wish that you weren't over here. I mean, and that's an absolute fact, man. Um, but you know, it is what it is. You make, you make the best out of it you make the best out of life. You put your best foot forward and you keep on trucking along. That's all really that you can do. Um, but sometimes I just wish I could either hit the lottery or I can run away. <laughs> yeah, just run away, bro. And and as long as I don't got to worry about money, I don't have to worry about finances and the kids straight. Or even if I can bring them along, we good. Look at the missus looking all lovely, so looking all good. Take your time. Crazy. <laughs> you know, you still broke. <laughs> hello everyone who did i miss who's yeah, we on got a, we got a few on uh you know I've, I've asked everybody to kind of hit us up in the comments let us know you on the live but i can see we got seven people on okay seven people we got rocking with us we appreciate the support oh let me go ahead and give a big shout out give a big shout out to all the new love life legacy podcast group members we appreciate you guys joining the group this group is where we keep it a hundred percent real we keep it a buck but we keep it uh how, how can i say it um not common not cordial mature mature thank okay. you we're not a trashy group we are not an immature group we don't put people business out there it's okay for adults to disagree but as long as you disagree with respect right. we're not one of these other groups that um you know i see i'm even a part of i'm not gonna lie to you because i look any and everywhere for content for us to talk but you know we keep we keep it a hundred. We also like to keep it a hundred with uh, showing each other respect, uh, challenging each other's perspective as we continue to grow, evolve and grow. So thank you for all the new podcast group members. What I'm going to ask for everybody that's on the live right now, if you are one of our loved podcast group members, yes, I challenge you all 
so we can grow this community, this this Love Life Legacy podcast family. I challenge you all to invite 10 of your friends starting out. Just invite 10 of your friends. Uh, put it in. Put the podcast on the timeline. Put it put it in their face. And so that so that we can grow this group, this community. Uh, the, the more the more people we get, um, you know, the, the closer we'll get to the point where we actually, you know, do cash giveaways, prize giveaways. We have a number in our mind that we're trying to get to. And because we love people, we love y'all. And we want to show you guys that we appreciate y'all rocking and supporting with us. We want to show love back. So we we want we got stuff we want to give away. But we're, we got a number in our head that we're trying to get to. So I would challenge you if you're on this live. Invite 10 people to the group, 10 people, and that way we can get to that number, and then we can start giving y'all boys stuff. We love y'all. <laughs> we want to give y'all stuff. You Right, babe? Yes, absolutely. We absolutely want to give y'all stuff. We've been blessed on our side, and we want to be a blessing to, uh, to, to everybody. And um, thankfully, we can use this platform to be that blessing, but we do it in our private lives, too. We just love people. And we want to see people do good, and we want to see people win. Yes. Um, but, you know, we got to get the group up. So, 10 people, yeah. each of y'all, 10 people. If you want to invite more, by all means, invite more. Uh, but we, we got a nice little little conversation today. I don't know where it's going to go. Because it's going to be all over. It's going to be all over. Uh, if you have time to stay on the live for the hour that we like to stay on the live, by all means, you can, even if we go over. But do not forget, also another plug, this conversation is going to go on probably a little bit longer. After we get to that hour, We'll pause the live, wife you get up, stretch, take a break, and we'll keep recording. Then you can find it on multiple platforms, Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor. Um, you can catch the full length of the conversation. We're going to keep recording. Um, we got a lot to talk about, a lot to talk about. So, so. before we go further, because I don't know what all he covered, um, Forgive me for my tartiness. So you've been doing um, mommy stuff. You're good. <laughs> okay, so first I wanted to hope you guys can see my earrings. Can you see them? All right, do some you business shout outs. Can you see them? These earrings are they are uh, pearl hooped it earrings. Mm -hmm. um, you can get them from D Essentials. Um, it's also on Facebook, D Essentials. Um, her name is Danielle Caradine, and she sold these to me. If you saw me walk in, I have on some waist beads. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to, you know, slim down for the 2021. <laughs> Get that thing, girl. Um, so my sister-in-law, her Facebook page is Embellished by Toy, or you can go to uh, find her by just searching Wasted by Toy. She does the waist beads. And my lips, uh, my lip gloss is popping. <laughs> because uh -oh. my lip gloss is from AK Beauty. It's from... Say it again, Dave. Oh. I'm sorry, I talked over you. Oh, no, it's no problem. AK Beauty. Mm -hmm. Another round of applause. Yes, yes, yes. Some it's from my friends, uh, uh, Lauren and Kenny. He's on the line. Their, da their daughters, Alea and Kanaya, uh, make lip gloss, and I am wearing their lip gloss today. Shout out to all the it's, startups, the business yes, owners. Yes. We salute you guys. Uh, you know, um, if you guys want to get a shout out on our platform, now and as we get bigger, by all means, you can send, reach out to us so you can get it to us. Yes, you can, so we can either reach out, or however, yeah, or... we can we can support by purchasing. It's not, or you just if you want to say, hey, here's my product, shout it out, yeah. and we'll make sure we put that tagline in. You can reach out uh, to us um, individually, Jonathan Singleton or Eva Singleton on Messenger. You can reach out to us through the group if you're in the group. Uh, at our, our podcast page, the it's Love Life Legacy podcast. What's yes, coming? The podcast page. No, I'm talking oh, about the on website. Facebook. Oh, the website. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Or yes. you can email us. Our email out now is active. It, it's uh, legacy082787 right. at gmail.com. Again, that's legacy082787 at gmail.com. And we uh, can put all this stuff in the, um, you know, in the comments. Yeah. And, and a little later a little a little later and also thank you to all of our group members that supported our book um, oh last, another round of applause last sunday we released that our book is ready hoodwink the burden of religion is ready for pre-order and i was surprised to see you know to see the um, the notifications come in of who was ordering our book. We really appreciate it. The book is going to be phenomenal. 
Um, you can also um, find us at or email us any questions or concerns or just comments to hoodwinktheburden at gmail.com. Um, I was speaking fast earlier, but in reference to our website, that's going to be coming up shortly. And we'll let you guys know when our actual website website is up and ready to go but we are excited about our book and the journey for that so thank you for all of those and all of those that you who will maybe support at a later date or just supporting us with just you know being around and just tuning in and liking and commenting on our page we really sincerely appreciate all your efforts towards us absolutely um so you want to go ahead well i'll i guess i can go ahead and and lead it so uh you know, we, we did a family movie night because we like to spend time, you know, as a family together because, you know, life goes so fast and and, and everything else. Yeah. Uh, oh, Rajon said, I like the new set. Thank you, brother. Hey, man, we're try, we trying to get this thing in. I got a little bit more that I want to do. And, uh, you know, we're going we gonna to keep evolving. We're going to keep growing. Um, but uh, we, try to, we try to spend time together because life is so, you know, goes so fast. We're separated. And so, you know, we like to do family movie nights. And Soul was one of the fam- family movies that we watched together, although it ended up watching me at the end <laughs> halfway through the movie. So I, I kind of listened to Eva talk with the kids about what it was about, but I always like to go back and watch it. And it was telling me how good it was. So I, I got the opportunity to go back and watch it, to finish it this morning. Uh-huh phenomenal movie phenomenal and one of our good friends our sister uh, she's on hey Tawana uh you know had asked a question and it was about the movie itself and you know I felt like it was only proper yes to kind of give our two cents you know about the movie so the question is you know what's what what's your real purpose and is going after your purpose okay right or is this life just random and you just live yeah. it however you want to? Just now, live your life. Just live your life. Yeah. I'm not going to give you a synopsis of the movie. Please go back and watch it. Um, but overall, the heart of the movie was trying to convey that I got to give a background. Okay, of the movie. go ahead. You have this. Sorry music. about spoiling it. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Spoil alert. Spoil alert. Sorry. <laughs> um, but the gist of the movie is you have this man that grew up and his lifelong dream has been being a musician and playing um, in front of an audience and getting the notoriety and the recognition uh, passed down from his father because his father was a musician and he gained a love for jazz. Yeah. So he tried and tried and tried and just could not get to a place where he found the notoriety and, his, and success. So he had to take a, regular job of being a substitute school teacher teaching kids that really didn't have a musical ear but needed to pay the bills yeah that turned into a full-time job but in the midst of him working this full-time job he got the opportunity to actually be in a band yes he got the call he got the call but right after he got the call he died (laughs) and went into the afterlife and in the afterlife he met this thing this girl i guess it's called the spirit Uh called 22 Mm-hmm. And 22 helped him along the journey, or he was supposed to be helping her along the journey, um, of finding out why he did what he did and what was purpose about. They ended up switching. Well, can I? Can I'm I, trying can, to go ahead and no, get through. No, I'm going to jump in and don't give too much of the movie. Okay, sorry. So when he went into the app, he was on his way to meet the Lord. And um, he realized that, you know, he had passed. And he was like, oh, no, I got to get back. You know, my life was just about to start. I was just about to live my purpose. You know, I got I got to be back at 7 o'clock tonight because, you know, I got this gig. And this is the moment I was looking for. So he found a way, and he used 22 to get back on Earth. Uh-huh. It, and, Just leave it right there. Okay, I'll leave it right there. So, long story short, he realized what was most important versus what he felt like what was most important and what he chased his entire life. Right. And it spoke volumes to me, especially us as adults, because you get into the mundane uh, merry-go-round of life and going after what you deem is your purpose. Right. But along the way, while you're adulting, you forget to just live life. And enjoy the moments. And enjoy the moments. And there was a part, a point in the movie where he had these items that he pulled out of his pocket based on the long storyline that we don't want to give. And he, and he set them out in front of him. 
and each item Say took what they were okay there was a pizza crust uh -huh. there was a flower there was a yarn yarn spool from his mom there was a lollipop yes each one of those items took him back to a specific memory and experience in his life and as he set them in front of him he started to play music which is his love and the music helped him go through and navigate through each one of those moments that those items brought him back to. Right. And it reminded him to enjoy the moments. Yes. Right? You, you, you spend your life chasing all of this stuff, which is fine based on your goals and your ambitions that you set for your life. I don't feel like you just need to just let life happen without you having a destination. Right? It's okay to get places. But don't forget to live in the midst yeah, before you get there. And I just want to add one thing. So before he came to this moment of realization, so he did make it back to the event in time to play that event that night. Uh huh. And when he which played, was his dream, yeah, which was his dream. When he played, he felt so great. He was on top. Yeah. The crowd cheered. The lady who he was playing for, you know, gave him his kudos. And then at the end of the night, it was time to go. Uh huh. <laughs> and he was waiting on something big. Right. And all the lady said was, see you, see you tomorrow night. She was like, like that's, that's it? it? Like, I waited my life for this one moment. moment to share my talent, how I could play with the world, to get in the grind, to get the claps, the applause, and all of that. And then it's over, and then we just got to do it again tomorrow. And she was like, yeah, that's yes. it. We got to do it again tomorrow. And then, going back to what Jonathan said, looking at those things that he pulled out of his pocket and how they connect to different pivotal points in his life and experiences, that he realized that he had missed what purpose was all about. was all about yes yeah, so. you know and in a part when he got back to that realm and it was the guides i forgot the, what their name was yeah and and he was like you know i have to give this to 22 because she found her spark yeah because he, you know she found her purpose and, and the the god was like that's not yeah. what this is all about no it's not the spark isn't what it means that your you're purpose. ready to go into the world. Yeah, that's all it is. You're ready to live. Yeah. Because this is a journey yeah. of self-discovery. Yeah. And it's so important that we continue to discover ourselves because as we evolve physically, we evolve emotionally, spiritually, all of that. But you have to be okay with evolving. And you can't become so fixated on, I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't care. I got to get there. That may be well and good. But as you drive or as you strive to go there, don't forget the little things and in between. Yeah. And if it doesn't look the way how you think it's supposed to look, yeah. that's fine. That's fine. What <laughs> you did you have a brain for? It? No, I didn't have a brain for it. It's just enjoying the <laughs> the concept of the movie again. Um, like for me, and then you can go into what the movie did for you. Okay. Okay, but for me, understanding that we all have talents and we all have strengths and we all have these great capabilities. And yeah, we may be purpose to do that, but purpose isn't just this one thing. Right. You know, we are all interdependent on one another. So in your purpose, you love others, you do unto others, you give yourself unto others, and this this relationship that forms that creates these great moments that that is better than any uh, emotional high from you working out this one area of your life and to realize that in my life yeah I may be great at remembering things and project management and documents and I may be a good person to help and all those things that I do but it's really those relationships that I have built along the way that are those monumental moments the, that that's the real high that I'm mm. looking for to mm. put a smile on somebody's face so when I'm remembering like Selena gave me a shout out the other day for her birthday on the 8th and just me remembering to sing her happy birthday because her her granny which raised her as her mom you know had passed away uh, like around the same time my mom did and I remembered it so in me being my dad a type of person that I am I made a note to remember her birthday and to sing her happy birthday and Jonathan reminded he was like that's what your you know your, your purpose is, is not just 
that you're good with paperwork. Yeah, I'm great at it. I'm great at managing projects. But it's that relationship factor that I have to to do that and to add and put a spark, you know, in her there life to remember that for the moment. And sometimes we get so caught up on what we're good at, our talents and the goals that we're trying to achieve that we forget about the people along the way that that makes those moments memorable. And we just can't forget that. So, yes, you have your purpose. You a hairstylist. Go for it, girl. Do hair. But when that sister's sitting in, that, in your in your seat, you there encourage you her. You lift her up. You know, you you know, you know you give and take in one another. And sometimes we forget that, <laughs> trying to catch the next dollar or be the best that's on top. But, you know, and then the whole transition part, you know, 22, that's her. She spoke to me because the whole reason why the girl, she was, okay, her name was 22 because she was the 22nd soul that was supposed to come on earth. <laughs> but she was so afraid to live. live. So all of her mentors that came before her. Well, hold on, hold on. Why was she afraid to live, though? Because she was told by so many different people yes. what living was. was. Yes. What purpose is supposed to look like. And yeah. I want to pause there for That's a second. That's good. Take it, honey. You really have to be careful with who you allow to tell you how you're supposed to live in this life. Hoodwink. You really have to be conscious of your teachers and your influencers and how much leverage that you give them in your life and your decision making. Mm -hmm. It's okay to take people's advice. Heck, we pride ourselves yes. on giving people advice. Yes. But and what taking we advice. and taking advice. But what we don't do is speak in emphatic terms. No, not anymore. This is the only we used to. Yeah, we used to. And we we realize how damaging that is and that was to someone who is discovering self. Right. Because we real, we came to a point of evolution where we believed one way at one time, mm -hmm. then we grew and we did not believe or see it the way how we did years ago. Yeah. So as you allow people to speak into your life and as you speak into people's life, give ideas, take ideas, but take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. And don't be afraid to leave yourself open and vulnerable right. to grow right. and experience beyond what other people's expectations of your life is. And beyond their experiences as Facts. well. Facts. That's yeah. a fact. Because she was so afraid of yeah. what this life was because she had all these people's Great people voices, she named. Great, great. She even had Mother Teresa as her mentor. Harriet Tubman, <laughs> yeah, just, uh, Lincoln. Yeah, just... All these great esteemed people who she was trying to measure herself to. And th that and their appearance of what greatness is. Yeah. Like, it's okay to strive for greatness, right? But your greatness may look different than someone else's greatness. And it's still great. And it's still great. And uh, the more, the most realistic terms that I can understand it is me being a father. Yeah. I have a junior. I got a son that's literally carrying my name. And that's what I pride myself on what legacy is, right? Being able to pass down and them to carry on. Mm -hmm. But me using that language as we grew in our understanding, I even told Eva, man, I shouldn't have even gave him my name. You did say that. I said that because I realized that as much as my son is my pride and joy, I don't want him to be me. I want him to carry on the values um, and be, you know, being a good person, decent, uh, morals. I want him to be chivalrous things. That's going to make just think that, that are constant that really don't need to change. But as far as him doing life, I don't want him to feel like, well, because my name is junior, I have to do it the way daddy did, or I have to do it so far left than daddy, because I got to prove that I'm different than him and my individuality still matters. And it grieved me for a second. But people, men experience that when their son isn't named just like him, just having That's your true. father presence. And feeling like I have to measure. I have to measure we up. We have to teach our children and give them space to be themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Just let people be themselves. And as you, you know, let people's words and stuff come in or whatever, take it, but don't forget to live. Yeah. Don't forget that you are on a journey, journeying to the best version of yourself. And don't be afraid to do that and silence the voices around you. Yeah. <laughs> like you just... Be you, do you, and be great. Yeah. That's really okay. it. And that's what that movie reminded 
us or me of. Mm -hmm. Be the best version of yourself. Yeah. Be the best Jonathan that you possibly can be. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that's really all that matters. Yep. Yep. You got something else on that? And your purpose is just not about you. I, I I really love that point because once he once he came to a place of revelation, it, it instead of him going so hard f for him to get back to earth, he wanted 22 to, to get her chance. to get her chance because it became bigger. He became self sacrificing. Yes. And that really is what life is about. I loved how when uh, me and you were talking, right? And at the point of the tragedy that happened. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on the fact is that it takes us to experience oh. tragedy sometimes to realize what life is about and to get back on track? Yes. I, I said because life is so short, I said it's a shame because we become so enamored and, 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 and fixed in just going after our thing, our purpose, doing our life, the rigmarole, the adulting, all that. We get so perplexed by that that sometimes it just takes, and unfortunately, it takes tragedy to at a split moment to wake you up. Like how he fell. And like he how died. he fell and he died. And then that tragic event was what was the thing that was used to wake him up, to put him back into a space where he needed to be so that he could live life. But the most beautiful part about that, even in him dying, wasn't about himself. Mm -hmm. Because he was the only one that was able to get 22 to live. Oh, that's, you know oh, that's, that's deep. So it's like, even yeah. like, so that's why when we are going through certain things, you just always mm. got to keep your eye out for the positive that coming in the mix. Mm. Because everything truly works out. You know, no matter what it may be, no matter how hard it may be, that's just the energy that the earth has, that God has just put here for us yeah. to know that, you know, whatever we're going through is going to look bad. We have pain, we have trials, we have tribulation, but truly, you know, it's for a greater purpose. And the greater purpose was her living and he still got his life back. He still got it With back. Per understanding so, purpose. Dang. So him giving some of himself, and y'all got to hear me for. for yeah, we are talking about. But, soul, so sorry. for those that feel like they have been depleted of their life by giving so much to Us. others, and they feel like they are unab unable to do that because they they are drained. There is power in what Eva just said. He didn't feel like his life had meaning anymore mm -mm. he didn't feel like he was able to give of himself anymore mm -mm. until he met somebody that needed that spark that only he could give mm -hmm. so i know that we all have experienced where people just feel like they take they take they take and they then you feel like okay so i give and they take but there's nobody to replenish everybody we all go through that but never never forget that you you're you're equipped to go through the things that you go through in this life. Yeah. And God knew you were going to go through that. And I know that it may look unfavorable that the scales are tilted on your side, but never forget that you still have more in you, even though you may not see it at your at the time, that you're able to give to somebody else that truly needs it at that time. Yeah, man. You're equipped. Like you get inspiration along the road, but at the end of the day, you're already equipped with it. Yeah, from the beginning. From the beginning, man. And you have your things that you go through in this life that kind of uh, strengthens you a little bit more, but it was already in you. You know that while using the language, you just got to tap into it. Yep. It's already there. You just need some guidance a little bit along the way. The people that you're around, that you allow to influence you to a degree, that helps you to be able to tap into it the way you're supposed to but it's already there it's already there don't be afraid to pour out even though you feel like you don't have any more to give mm -hmm. you do and we've experienced that we have like time and time, time and time, time again. again and we still experiencing that yeah. and just to harp on hoodwink really quick you know that was our lowest like just you know at a really dark spiritual place you know just coming into our new understanding just trying to find ourselves all over again. You know, the things that we have taught wrong over the years, or we spoke things that were emphatic and the people that were following us and doing things the way that we were doing. And just to come to the realization that, man, we've been wrong about a lot, a lot of, of stuff. stuff. Like, ugh. But, but even, <laughs> if, why are you laughing? Somebody said something? Ugh. Yeah, ugh. 
and to <laughs> and, and to actually now be on the other side and be like, man, even that moment, the low moment, which I read about in the book, you know, is now coming around and turning out for our good yes. and actually made us better and help yes. us redefine our purpose and understand that even us going through that was a part of our purpose right and you know it's taking us further and it's going to help so many, many more people. people you know so it's like wow you know when i thought it you know everything was trash and just couldn't get over it couldn't get over how we just let our lives just go by the way that we did and to be like man you know it, it wasn't that bad we it made wasn't. it and we <laughs> made it yeah you you you're you're gonna make it. Yeah. That guy didn't realize he was gonna get another chance at life. No, he didn't. But what he focused on before the chance came was giving someone else, else life. Life. It's all about giving somebody else life, man. Mm -hmm. Dang, never good. Yeah. It's it's funny. I mean, he was talking. I love kids' movies as an adult because they put this stuff in it for us. It's, it's like feeding a child medicine in a, a way that appeases them, but you got to trick them to give them the medicine because you know they're going to take it. So we don't want the medicine, which are the lessons in these movies. Uh -huh. But the way to get it to us is by making it look flowery and fun and kitty and kids nag us enough to make us and force us to sit down and watch it. And but at that, that moment, that's when they really give us what we need they give yeah. us the medicine yeah you know in the package of cartoons but dreamworks pixar disney the messaging that my, these adults you know deliver are, inc are incredible. incredible to us my kids they understand half of what we just talked about no. <laughs> and so it ain't meant for them to and, understand though but from my perspective and i'm pretty sure as adults you guys just watching it and how much volumes that is spoke. Uh, John and I was talking about Toy Story 4. Yeah. Man, <laughs> now I cried when Woody and Buzz separated. And just oh. to think about the different transitions that we go through as adults in our lives. You know, I cried and I still cry being separated from my mom who has passed away in 2019. But that's a transition right. that life brings about that has to happen. And we can't be afraid, afraid of it. to take on those transitions because they are a part of the life cycle. And the, when we start to embrace those transitions and look on towards to the greater things that's coming in the transition and stop trying to hold on to the things that have passed away, we are we really find a new fulfillment and a new joy in what's coming. And that once agging pain is is not really pain it's just a feeling of of, of missing somebody right. which is still a strong pain but then you you're able to smile again yeah, you know i yeah, was always yeah, afraid yeah. about moving or selling our house because it was like okay once we close this door you know <laughs> you know once we sell it we can't get it back but it was always the fear of the unknown because we only we we hold on to what we what we know of what's what's familiar yeah what's, what's familiar but I didn't know the day my mom died that I would be okay talking about her today. Right. You know what I'm saying? And able to smile and laugh and do things today, even though I still miss her, but that transition was necessary. You know, yeah. Buzz and Woody, their friendship is genuine. They went it, they went through did. so much stuff. They did. Man, we can go through so many angles. <laughs> I know. Um that that was beautiful. So to add on the piggyback off what you were saying before we pivot into another angle, um, not being afraid to transition to the next stage in life. Yeah. He was leaving his crew that they had time together to transition into another phase of life and accepting that reality. Transitions are supposed to happen, just like evolution happens. You right. come into this world not being able to take care of yourself. You learned, you learn how to take care of yourself, to feeding yourself, to walking, to talking, to uh, supporting yourself, and then life cycle happens all over again. Yeah. But you can't be afraid of each transition in your life. Right. Because it is going to teach you the principles and lessons that you need that are going to help you endure and for your life to be able to help somebody else endure. Yeah. And all these new people that Woody was actually coming in contact with, they needed all of his experience. Mm -hmm. 
of being a toy in this world. That's yeah. crazy we are talking about. <laughs> yeah, and he Kids got familiar stuff, no, with Bull Peep. You know, he got his love back. He you got know? his so, love back. You know, we just can't be yeah. afraid of transition. And another thing about death is a part, not like physical death of somebody dying, but just the change of something ending is a part of every transition. Absolutely. And, and we don't, we don't, it don't register to us. Right. That that's what it is. You know, <sighs> that seed that yeah. we plant in the ground has to bust open a form of death for life to come up. And then those buds have to bust open a form of death to bear whatever fruit or whatever leaves. And then, you know, for the new season, it, a whole thing has to die, you know, and just bust open again and, and new life is. And that's what it's like as we go through each door and each stage of transition, life or whatever it is. And we just have to learn how to embrace that as adults. That's really good. Yeah, man. So to the other point about transitioning, Woody had to let go of people that, that he, loved. he loved and was familiar with to transition to the next phase in life. Yeah, man. It's about trust. He had to trust them. He had to, you know, hey, man, we can talk about that all day. We can't, man. That's really good. You guys ain't had no comments Yeah, they've been, they been with us. They've been commenting. I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Ready yeah. to live. Don't let others dictate. Yeah, yeah, we got some yeah, good man. comments. So it's good. <clears throat> you don't want to keep talking about that? No, man, unless you got something. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. I, I used to be afraid to talk in language like that. Like what? Like, you know, because it, it sounds churchy. Because we used to hearing it in church. Yeah, we're used to hearing it in church. But it's but a it's, spiritual understanding. It's a spiritual understanding, and it's a life lesson. Yeah, man. You know, that can be applied in so many different ways and so many different arenas. Um, but I had to grow into releasing the negativity that I saw about transitioning from off the pulpit. Right. I had to release that. I hated myself. Mm -hmm. And I did not want any resemblance of uh, talking or what it looked like while I was on the pulpit. Right. But I had to embrace it because that's my story. By on the pulpit, Jonathan was a preacher. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah everybody know what that means. I, mean, <laughs> I think everybody know what I mean. If I um, didn't know you, I wouldn't know what that means. Like, what do you mean by on the pulpit? I, I got what you're saying. <laughs> so I, I had to release that because I attached everything negative that I saw about what we were doing wrong and appreciate what it taught us right. to bring us to where we are now. Right. And it's fine. I'm That's cool it. with it. Because you're growing. I'm growing. Yeah, man. You, you feel me? I feel you. Hey, that was a good one. That was good. Can I hit Can I hit the round, round of applause real go quick? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can close that chapter. We're ending this segment. Yeah, we're ending this segment. <laughs> on, on, on to some more juicy stuff. So okay. oh, also, if y'all have, again, just a reminder, if you got any questions that you want to hear us um, talk about our opinions on it. Um, don't be afraid to message us. Um, put it out on the, the group, our Facebook page, or email. Again, it's legacy082787 at gmail.com because we would love to answer your questions um, as we dialogue in a group about certain things. So you want to hit this one or you want to hit this one? Um, anyone. Let's talk about the young lady who mm. has children, has okay. been in a long-term relationship Go ahead, talk about that. All one. right, so let me read it. Here, here's the setup. All right, I'm going to just say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 25. I have been with the same guy for 10 years. And she meant 15. We have three beautiful daughters and a lovely companionship. My issue is that he has not married me, not even proposed to me yet. And I talked to him about marriage, and he says, yeah, he wants to get married. We come from a generation where marriage is uncommon. Neither of our mothers or fathers are married, but I want different for my kids. I can't go another year just being his baby mama and playing wifey when he has not even committed himself to me. Any advice? Hmm. Y'all got any advice? <laughs> y'all, y'all put in the comments what y'all, what y'all think about, um, what y'all think about that one? In a relationship since she was 15. <laughs> yeah. There was a 10-year relationship. Uh-huh. Three children. Yeah. She wants to be married. Uh-huh. And he don't talk about it. Hmm. What do you think? I, th I thought he said he would. No, 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 no. Yeah, but he... Okay. She she said... Um, My issue is not that we, that he has not married me, 
not even proposed to me yet. I talked to him about marriage and he says, yeah, he wants to get married. So he's he hasn't done it yet. Mm -hmm. They got three kids, 10 years. Um, what? Um, What's she doing Mike wrong? say, uh-oh. Uh-oh, <laughs> what, Mike? You got to elaborate a little so bit. So what, what's she doing wrong? You, what's she doing wrong? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you want me to answer that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it his fault? Is it his fault or is it her fault? It's her fault. It's her fault because she's obviously requiring marriage that she's not getting. You know, she done pop up three churn for him. She stayed in a 10-year relationship. So, obviously, she didn't require marriage to keep giving herself to him. Okay, so it's her fault that she stayed that long and kept having kids. Yep. Okay. So he doesn't bear responsibility in that at all. No, because he, he ain't given the ultimatum. He's content. I mean, one thing that I like to tell people to be clear of, be clear and communicate your expectations at the beginning or as soon as you realize it. Um, I don't like the fact that, you know, and I'm not saying that she's assuming, but by her staying around, it to me is an assumption that marriage is forthcoming. And it might be. But if she's tired of it, then it sounds like she got to put her foot down. Right. Uh, Marcus, Marcus said, go yeah, ahead. She's the one who's putting up with it. You're that's, absolutely right. That's what I'm saying, too. It's she, like, she, does, she should have required him a long time ago uh, to, to, to be married. And this is the beef I have with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here, I'm getting on my Kevin Samuel tip, go bro. Go ahead, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, I hate y'all. I hate y'all women. I'm just playing. <laughs> I have jokes, jokes, jokes. They're all jokes. <laughs> I, but, but a real beef I have with you guys is y'all really do uh, live life through assumption, live a, a live relationship through assumption. I mean, he's living life through assumption, too. No, it's, no he's, he's not. He's living life because mm -hmm. if she, he's assuming she's going to always stay. Okay. He's a, okay, go ahead. Let me let you have your flow. He doesn't have an expectation. He does. Her, no, his no, no, expectation no, 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 is no, no, different. No, no, no. His no, no, expectation okay. is that she's going to stay and be here. So you really think he's thinking about the future? He's thinking don't, about right now. Exactly. And right so now she's he's, staying. So he doesn't. Right. That's not an expectation, though. Yes, because he expects her to still stay every day. Because they've been doing it for 10 years like this. So why wouldn't he expect her to stay and not go anywhere while she actually has plans and intentions for the future and are not requiring this man to honor her plans and her intentions for the future. Why didn't you say something in year four? She probably did. She said okay. she was talking to him about it. You said it. something in Mike year four. Mike says it's both of their fault. Their, their intentions aren't clear. I agree with that. I agree but with I'm, you. But I'm, I'm on my Kevin Samuels tip, brother. You got to let me cook for a second. You <laughs> <Go gotta>... <laughs> <ahead>. <laughs> Why didn't she say something in year five? She probably did. But then she had another baby. She sure probably did. Then why didn't she say something in year seven? She probably did. And she had another baby. Probably did. You see the dangerous timeline that we're dealing with? Yeah, man. So this man is seeing her continue to be his all, his love, his everything, popping out kids, hitting it on the regular. Mm -hmm. They living in the house together. Everything's good. Yeah. Pattern why, so why, why, but why would he even think to solidify what already appears solid in the first place. And then you guys say, well, I assume that he would have just known. No, we need clear directives. We can't read y'all mind. But and she if it made is, it known though. No, she mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for example, y'all say, honey, I'm hungry. I was just about to use oh, that example. Man. Honey, um, I'm hungry. Yeah. All right, what you want to eat? I don't know. All right, well, I'm going to go get me some food. <laughs> All right, bring me something back. What you want? I don't know. Bring me what you get. I'm going to do my due diligence to bring you something back. Mm -hmm. I get it. I bring it back. You get it. You look in front of you. It sits in front of you. What is this? It's food. I didn't want this. How do you know? Uh-uh. That's what you wanted. That's not how that's a Man, that's goes. how a lot that's how the scenario goes a lot. Mm -hmm. And it, the thing is men always are on this like this merry-go-round of trying to figure out are y'all out without clear direction okay. and directive. 
It's like you I'm boiling. Help us, help us. Okay, first of all, and I'm going to merge the two top, the two other topics because the other topic is actually about the man being the leader. Please don't merge it. I have to merge it, <laughs> and then the reason why. No, you. The you, reason why you I have to prove to, a point. Yeah, to prove <laughs> the point, and I'm going to use your very scenario of me being hungry because I'm going to take it to me and you, right? So, Jonathan, same scenario. I said I'm hungry. Truth be told, I don't know what I want to eat half of the time. <laughs> That's all. Sometimes women. I do, but I go with the flow. Hey, bring me something back, or I'll say bring me what you get, or whatever, whatever. Okay, boom. You bring back food that I don't like. What am I going to do? You're going. I'm going to eat, eat off it. your plate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. If you and bring, that's also... Pro wait, wait. If you uh. bring back two separate meals, I'm going to eat off your plate. I'm not... And then if you eat the meal you brought for me, then I'm going to eat it. <laughs> it's something How about oh, whatever you oh, have. Oh, 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 I want sound effects up. <laughs> it's something about if it's good enough for you, I want it. I really don't want the meal because you're not eating that meal. I only oh, want oh, here you go. <laughs> I only want the meal that you're currently eating. I swear that's so I don't confusing. know. It's a psychological thing. Okay, go ahead. So, pertaining to that, being that, I'm following your lead. If you want the chicken sandwich, I want the chicken sandwich. <laughs> if you want the chicken nuggets, I want the chicken nuggets. Because I want whatever you want. Oh, that all right. Okay, wait. Oh, I'm about to, flip, I I'm can about, flip that no, on you. Though. No, I know. I'm about to flip it for you. Oh, you can't. Okay. Yeah, listen. I'm so, because I'm content really in the relationship, hint, the girl is content to a certain extent in the relationship, and she has been obviously content for 10 years or willing to deal with it. Her threshold of the relationship wasn't exceeded because she stayed for 10 years. Now she's just getting to the point. But for 10 years, I was comfortable eating your food. You get where I'm going? Got you. Right? And now, all of a sudden, after 10 years, I am starting to tell you, I want it this way. And because for 10 years you've been able to do it your way and I just was saying I want to be married but I'll I'll keep eating off the plate of we just want to keep having children and living together and all of that. So now that I have come to a point where I actually telling you that no I want a number 9, you know, super size or whatever it is, you don't really know how to deal with it. Do you get where I'm going? I, 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 I do because get, I, I do have get allowed you to lead the relationship in the hopes of that you are going to marry me. In the hopes of you're going to just one day propose to me. Maybe it's going to be my birthday. Maybe it's going to be on Christmas. But I was full into following your lead knowing that you knew I was hungry. Knowing that you knew I wanted to be married. But then you kept letting me down. So now I'm getting fed up about it. So now I'm telling you what I want. I agree. Okay. I, I, see, I see your point. Okay. I, I absolutely see your point. Um, okay, good. My my thing is, why did it take that long? Because we are patient and kind and loving and soft spoken. But I hate. The, okay, <laughs> uh, but I, I, not I'm, all. The I'm time. gonna use I'm gonna use this language in this really strong word. Um, but I hate that about y'all. It's not our fault. And the, and, the, and the reason why I hate that is because the change happens. All of a sudden, because if y'all would lead continually, and, he and, is no, leading he's not according leading, to his no, expectations. No, but he's not leading with progress. Okay, how much longer? How long are we going to eat? When are we going to eat a number two? A man can eat a number one for a and, very and, long time. And that's time. what I'm saying. And that's why it's no progress. There's no forward movement. And that's so why my, us women feel like now we got to take the lead. Now we got to put our foot down. Now we got to give ultimatums because there's no progression. I am growing. Me, I'm no longer me, wants to be me, me checking you, up with you. Let me ask you a question. As a man, if you say, hey, we're in year one, we have a beautiful child. In year three, we need to be married. How do you think I would handle that? You? No, okay. How do you think a man uh, can handle that? It depends on where the man is at. Okay, so if we're supposed to lead, and you set a, you give me what your uh, expectation is, mm -hmm. you set your boundaries. Uh huh. You give me time to plan and lead. Are you telling me that I won't? It's took him ten years. No, no. Hear what I just said. Okay. Hi, honey. I love you. I'm the woman. Pause. All right. Hi, honey, I love you. We are year one, uh, you know. Um, okay, no, let me. We're in year three. Uh -huh. uh, we've been through some things. We have a beautiful child. 
uh, I want us to be married by year five. And okay? that's me, the woman saying that. The right? woman saying that. Okay. That man says, yeah, I don't have a problem. Uh -huh. um, you know, I, I want to get married anyways. But you've already given him a timeline. Uh -huh. By the fifth year, you guys are going to be married. Uh -huh. You don't think that that man will utilize that time to plan, Not to do what men. he needs to. Okay, you guys are talking about we're supposed to leave, but you guys don't give us the proper time. That's based the on thing. hold on hold on based on what we know you want based on you setting your expectations based on you letting me know what your boundaries are and now since i know that i know what i can work with if you tell a man hey i need this to be built you give them you give a man the tools you give the man the know-how and you let that man know the time frame, he's going to get that done. It's something innate in Not us. Not all men. But I'm, okay, I'm talking to stand-up men here on the line. Yes. What's up, who it is? And who really stand raised. up and not just thinking that they stand Real up. Real men. Because that's not the case in every situation. You you know the type of men I'm talking about. Marcus said, I call BS. You know what I'm saying? You can't tell him how rip. to progress. He said, I tell you, you ain't telling me what to do. How am I supposed to leave? <laughs> so... Yeah. Not helping my case too so, much, bro. <laughs> so that's the issue, bro. You're not, bro. <laughs> because hey, hey, we we gonna have to have a conversation tomorrow, man. I'm just playing with you. I appreciate woman, you. As the woman, I can't tell you how to progress, but I can tell you how I'm progressing. How I'm progressing, and if I'm progressing towards marriage and you're not, and if you're not tight, if your timeline ain't meeting my timeline, then it must be an end. That's the way I see it. I agree. Okay, this okay, this is what I this is why I agree. If you've already given me your timeline, you set your expectations, you let your boundaries be known, and I still don't step up, take your behind on somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, that obviously I am not equipped to handle your level of preparedness. Yeah. And where you going in your life yeah you deserve better and you hold me back and but yeah, i agree and I, going back to mike i really do think it's both of their fault because okay. they shouldn't have got to 10 years with that I, I they feel both should have communicated what they want and that is the i feel you. one thing that couples don't do enough of is really planning their lives together doing life together yeah you know people get in the conflict yeah. of living their routine I lives, agree. doing what they're always doing but they don't really plan their life out together every year before we go to another year me and jonathan have a conversations about our expectations of that year what we want to get done what we want to accomplish we got a little jar that that i keep account of mm -hmm. that we put things on sticky notes we dream we put things that we're going to it's achieve. Call a dream jar. Yep. We put things that we want to achieve in there. And every periodically, we pull it out. We go through them. We open them. We achieve them. Boom. We celebrate. We give each other a kiss. Go to the next one. And yeah. then if it's something that we didn't achieve, you know, we forgot about that. Oh, we got to put that on the top of our list to make sure that we get that, get we, that done. We haven't gone through that jar for 2021 yet. Yeah, 2021 just start, but we went through it before Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, we did. So, All right, my bad. <laughs> we are, <laughs> what, the 10th oh, tenth, tenth day of 2021. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we haven't yeah, went yeah. through it yet. But, um, but the whole point is plan life together. So in year two, if she was feeling that way, you know, babe, what's our goals for this year? You know, we be so focused on partying and turning up for the new year and, you know, just doing our regular room, rigmarole that we actually don't do things on purpose. It's strategic. You're yeah. right. You're absolutely right. Um, Devano said, if that woman sticks around and she knows he's poor, is a poor leader, that's her fault for sticking around. And I agree. I agree. Like, she stayed percentage. way too long, man. Like, and it shows that she is a poor leader. Ooh. Oh, hold on. Oh my boy, I wish I'd be having my sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. Uh, and the thing is, and the reason why I wanted to jump to that, the other topic a little bit, but Jonathan doesn't want me to, is that just be, there is, there could be more than one leader in a group. You know, one person may be the leader as the spokesperson, but there could be several leaders in the group. And just because you're the leader doesn't diminish my leadership quality. Well, that's that. Okay. That does take us into our next topic. Let me set it up for you. Okay. Another question that came in to us again, hit us with these questions. We are ready to answer these things. Okay. Uh, wives, do you feel that in a marriage, your husband should discuss life changing decisions with you before he makes them? Or do you just follow his lead because he's the man of the household and he's supposed to lead? 
That's what she's talking about. I don't know if any ladies online, but how do y'all feel about that one? Well, yeah, well, what you were saying, I was setting you up because you were yeah. about to go into it anyways. Yeah. That women can lead too. Yeah, women can lead too, okay. and I and I don't like but, that okay. talk because you don't like, what? Okay. Go I ahead. don't because it comes to this this understanding that us women are supposed to uh, hush, be submissive, and just trust the man and all that great stuff. Okay. And, in the in in the in the year 2021 knowing especially our generation because we are millennials right yeah women are really hard at any level of submission it's almost i don't think so okay hear, hear what i'm saying i'm gonna use you as an example please do how hard mm -hmm. did you have to marcus tell your wife what up um, how hard, and, uh, cause he said my wife is here. I don't want that to come off wrong, but he said my wife is here. Tell her we said what's up. How long and how hard did you have to practice mm -hmm. submission? And uh -huh. how often are you reminded that you still need to practice it? Right. But my, I never had an issue with submitting to you as I have come to understanding the difference between submitting to you and trusting you. To me, there's a difference. My whole buck against the different things that you wanted to do in our life was because I didn't trust you. What are you about to press? Because I see you pulling up the sound thing. <laughs> I'm for real. It was that I didn't trust you. If you go back over it, I didn't trust Jonathan to make certain decisions. I didn't. I didn't trust that he had the wherewithal. I didn't trust. Why you get your hand up? Go ahead. Go ahead. I want to. I'm, I'm, I, I I'm being obnoxious for a reason. Okay. I did not trust. No. What's the reason? Because now you distracted me. What did I give you in the beginning of our marriage that showed that I wasn't trustworthy? It didn't matter. No, 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 no. Hold up. That is so pivotal. It's not pivotal. No, it really is because that validates my point that y'all okay. have a very okay. hard no. time to submit. No, trust is not. This is one encompassing word. Oh I trust God. you enough to Jesus have a baby Christ. for you. I trust you enough to move out my mama's house and to move in with you. I trust you enough to make sure that you paid the light bill on time. Boom. But to trust you with certain things like my career, uh, things that I wanted to do versus the things that you wanted me to do, I wasn't about to give myself in that capacity. Do you not see the difference? The things I, that okay. I bucked I, up I with, kind of. The things I bucked up with you about was the things that involved me and my time and you telling me to do something. Like I had a, it Jonathan likes Jonathan is very difficult. <laughs> oh, say that again. Jonathan say, say that again. is very difficult. Say that again. So um, you are difficult. He is very precise. He likes things done a certain way. He huh. is just over the top. Me, Jonathan, is very systematic. Huh. And like this table, for example, I'm not even going to go there. No, so, go ahead. Jonathan, I want people to know how hard it is. There, Jonathan is very hard because things has to be his way. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, uh. I hate that language. Okay. Hold on. In his words, he's going to say things just have to be the right way. A certain way. But it's his way. And no, but no, no, he no. doesn't see that. Anyways, this is my time. Jesus Christ. Okay. So it was this time where I used to work nights. In the daytime, there may be dishes in the sink. It was only me and him and our first daughter. Maybe dishes or whatever. Jonathan would come home and yell that maybe a cup and a plate or whatever because I laid down all morning. I was being lazy. So he would yell at me and tell me, you know, why you didn't wash these little bit of dishes? Just a little bit. You just could have rinse it out or whatever, whatever. And I'd be like, don't tell me what do I do what I want to do. It's not like it's piling up. So he's talking about me bucking against him and not wanting to submit to him asking me to do certain things like that. Am I right or wrong? To a degree, you're right. Okay, boom. To a degree. To me, it wasn't urgent. It wasn't a bunch of dishes in the sink. Jonathan would yell about how I would fold clothes or how I would wash clothes because he wanted it done a certain way. To me, that's not that's not even a topic of submission. That was your preference. You're quiet. Because it's it's like okay, when it's we we look at things as a man out of the eyes of respect. Mm -hmm. Right? If we're asking of something. Uh-huh. And we don't get that. And right, it's not a and hard, then. no, no, it's not a hard ask, but it's met with that's dumb or it's met with that's stupid 
or it's met with that don't make no sense. We feel disrespected. Now, if you would have met me with, babe, can we have a conversation about that? And can you explain why? We don't get the opportunity to give why we feel like things are supposed to be a certain way. And then we're hit back with language. Well, you, you, you just want it your way. No, that's not what I am saying. I have experienced things in my life. I have seen certain things in my life and I've tried certain things in my life. And I have come through a, to a conclusion that this way works best. For you. It's not okay. But now we're a team and this is a unit and I would want it to be us. But you don't give me but, the opportunity to explain. You hit me with, that's dumb. You always wanted to be away. But because uh, we didn't come to a team decision. What? That, that's the that's the thing. You can't okay, you never Isn't asked, that me leading? No. You didn't ask if I Eva, how do you feel about if I saw no, how you did it okay, and it was it messy. Matter, but I'm talking about the discussion. <laughs> we didn't have the discussion. You know, so when we were in elementary oh. and middle school and we had those group projects, it was teaching us a life principle that we can apply here right now. Everybody in the group tells the leader or speaker what to say. We all have to agree. Eva, why is it that when it's like five dishes in the sink, you just don't go ahead and wash the dishes? I would say I'd rather wait till all the dishes come so therefore I can wash it all at one time. We didn't have a discussion. Hey, Eva, you been laying down all day. This is my this is how I feel disrespected. Hey, Eva, what you did all day? Now I've been watching TV, you know, did this with Jayla. So why them dishes in the sink? Why you ain't take care of that? To me, that's disrespectful. You approaching me as I'm some type of child. We did not have a discussion that, you know, if it's a spoon or a bowl in there, even to this very day, I'll put something in the sink. Eva, can you rinse that out? Like who says I have to rinse it out? It just makes more sense to you. But if I want to put it in there, I should be able to put it in there. So, uh, Marcus said he needed definition of submission. Hit him. Submission says the action or fact of accepting or yielding to a superior force or to the will of or will or authority of another person. You want me to take it away? I want you to take it away. The reason why I feel like submission has to be okay. Mutual. We, mu oh, that's, what gonna, well, that's what I was gonna go at. Well, that's what I was gonna go at. I feel like submission is mutual. Because mm -hmm. there are certain things where I submit to my wife. Especially when areas that I am not good at, that she's better than me at. Mm -hmm. And things that I don't understand. Or I just want my wife to step in and take it home. He's like, yeah, babe, you got that. Do that I thing, man. I think that's what Harry was saying. I don't have a problem with following a woman that's That's an alpha, an alpha female. female. Yeah, I don't have a problem. You know, finances is a big thing. You know, we talked about in the area of submission. This woman, she currently now, finally, makes more than me. I don't got a problem with that. <laughs> I can submit to the fact that my wife finally and currently makes more than me. I'm cool with that. We both do well in life, but right now she on top. I'm cool. That don't stroke my, uh, hit my ego at all and whatsoever. But when it comes to the survival, the survivability of the, the family, the house unit actually being a certain way. Uh, people looking at us um, is saying, you know, and kind of judging us from the lens of how we move as a unit. Our failures and our successes, she's not going to be looked at. I am. If our daughters or our son goes wayward, I'm judged. Uh, yeah, if our house is foreclosed, uh, you know, again, like our first one was. I'm looked at. If something goes wrong, we're judged, we're scrutinized, we're criticized. And I feel like because we carry the bulk of the weight and the burden, then even though uh, submission may be uh, mutual, I should have a little heavier side on who submits a little bit more because everything rises and falls on leadership. I don't see how I can take the brunt of a failure if I don't get the more leverage of the decision. I'm going to have to eat that. I understand what you're saying. So why not give me the, the, the go ahead to make these decisions for us, for the unification and for the success of us. I'm taking everything into consideration. Now I'm not telling you to shut up and let me just do my thing. No, please share. Baby, I need you. We're a team. Give me the, the pros, the cons. Uh, share how you feel about it. But at the end of the day, trust me in making this decision work 
for us. That's all I'm saying. I agree with you on that, honey. Okay. I don't. I don't. I then only. I don't know what we're saying. I though. only disagree with this one portion of it. <laughs> all right. That submission has a lot more to do with trusting than it is just submission. Okay. But for there. Example, but there. But but I think for, that there are more synonyms than no, they do work. No, work let me against give, each Let other. me give an example using a different type of relationship. Okay. Okay. So, you we all work a job. Yes, we right? do. And we have to submit to our bosses. Am I yeah. right or wrong? Yeah. Uh, do you, you know trust? How I feel about that. Yeah, but do you trust your boss? No. You don't always trust them. No. Okay. So when it comes to my personal life dynamic, right? Okay. I may have, or another woman may be in a relationship with a man that she is supposed to submit to. Okay. But... She does not trust. Now, this dealing with her personal life. She, she ain't on no job. This is after she clock off and she in her house. Okay. And she has to deal with the man that she doesn't necessarily trust. Okay. All right? So, therefore, her submission to him is going to look different. She is not going to give up her life to that man in certain areas if she doesn't trust him with that part yet. That is all I am saying. So, I can't say I to a sister... Who's in the, like the twenty five year old, the twenty five year old in that relationship for ten years? He probably can say, "I ain't ready to marry her because she don't submit to me." Well, he proves <laughs> that he ain't worthy to be submitted. Ten to. years a long time, you bro. Know, you can't. They use probably that. ain't even you know scratch the surface on certain financial goals. They probably don't own their home. They probably get an income assistance. I don't know what it could be for them, but he hasn't showed that he had the capacity to lead. But he's probably sitting there waiting to say, well, I ain't going to marry her until she do this. And she got to look at me like that. Or she ain't ready for marriage. Not seeing himself. So I'm not disagreeing with the fact that women should submit. And I definitely agree with the fact that the man should submit to the woman if she's equipped to lead as well. But it has to be a mutual understanding. And the two people have to be on the same accord. Those examples that I gave about us in the beginning of our relationship was me actually trusting that you were right. To the fact is that if I wash a little bit of dishes, that's probably going to take me two minutes. It's not going to take me 30 minutes to wait for the dishes to get piled up. I get that now. I just didn't like the way you approached me. To me, you approached me with disrespect. That's why you were met with disrespect. But you didn't see your approach to me as disrespectful because you were frustrated and inquiring me a why I left four dishes in the sink. So that was the difference, and that's how we had to grow to the point of now. Now I see something, I'll take care of it. If I'm rushing, yeah, I'm going to leave it in the sink. But I got the principle. But I had to trust the process of what you were trying to do above what, you, what I felt you were doing to me at the moment. Do you get that now? I'll give you that. Thank I'll you. I'll give you that. Here, you get one of these two. Thank you. Good Let's job, try. honey. Good job. Good job. I got to keep still, but I try. Yeah, you better keep, keep yeah. still with your broke self. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus, I want, oh, go ahead. Marcus you said, my wife says it affects her and it needs to be discussed. I get it. Yeah, I, and I, I do. Just, because, because. It all, everything, all life decisions, because we're, we're in a partnership. Yeah. All life decisions do need to be discussed. And it's out of it's out of uh respect and mutuality. It yeah. really is. If I see my wife um uh, through the eyes of respect and I see my wife as an equal and I don't diminish her value, then I would think that because we're in this together, then I I should discuss this with her. Yeah. And but what I do ask and my wife does give me the opportunity to put this in practice is that when I do see the next phase in our life as the visionary for our family. I don't always see it. Because she doesn't always see it. We, we've we learned and adjusted to how we play our roles and our parts. Uh, do by, trust. By, do, do trust yes. and through time. Yes. Do trust and through time. And that's why we, we say things in other conversations, leave room for the what ifs, which is in one of the podcast conversations uh, uploaded on one of the platforms that I keep shouting out, uh, shameless plug. But leave, that's why we say leave room for the what ifs, because you have to go through those things, those up and downs, yeah. to actually get to a place where you kind of mellow into what you know works. Right. And because we understand that, if I say, babe, we're shifting. I feel it. I see it. Uh, we're, we're shifting. I'm so scared now. She's scared. <laughs> this is what she does, right? Because we've learned over the years. How we are. How we are. She says, okay, if you say we are, that's fine. That's not the end 
of the conversation. It's only the beginning. It's only the beginning. <laughs> so be, when I get that, then now I do now my follow up research diaphragm diagrams. Because I'm gonna ask proof, questions and I'm statistics. gonna drill. Uh, yeah, man, the process of getting in this house where we are now, I did all of that. I had to show her what our I bills were going to look like I didn't every trust month, it. what we were going to be saving. You know, it, should, it had to be a certain thousand dollar amount that we was going to be saving and it couldn't be under. And I was like, OK, well, let me do it this way. Let me manipulate it this way. Let me show her the statistics this way. Let me prove how what we could get from the sale of the house this way. I had to prove and show that when I said, hey, we're shifting, these are the details of what it's going to take How to shift. How many guys do that's that, what it, Well, it's a process. And you have to be okay as a man to not feel diminished in your authoritative role as a leader. When she questioned you. When she questions you. But that goes more to the resolve of the man than it does on the disrespect or the unsubmission of the woman. Right. So I don't mind doing that because I know in me doing my work, then I'm validating her security and I get to pivot us the way we need to pivot. And you are able to clarify your plans. Yeah. Because, you yeah. know, when you cast yeah. your vision of what you want to do, you doing that detailed research, you close different gaps, you saw different scenarios, you know, you was able to, you know, maneuver certain things like I'm going to go into all the details of what actually happened. But at the same time, we were still had hiccups along the road. It wasn't as easy. It wasn't, it wasn't as yeah. seamless, but the execution, we were we able to execute and we were prepared. Yeah. And w what I said was going to happen, happened. Yeah. We don't we, know the end. We got to the end result. Exactly. But yeah. Selena said, I don't submit. I reciprocate. I, feel about that. I agree with that because that's, I think that's what we got to. When I was able to reciprocate to you, you was able to reciprocate to me. You don't feel as though that was legitimate? I do. Yeah. I do. And then when one of us don't reciprocate the right way, we we get attitudes. I do. <laughs> we say so I do I do agree with that reciprocation. I do. I do. You know? I, I um, get that. But you have to respect he or she mm -hmm. question. Oh, you, you that, it, that that's a question. He's asking a question. I don't even know where you at. Oh, at the bottom. Oh, okay. Because I went back up to say Moana. She said, "Yes, Eva. Trust and submission goes hand in hand." Harry said, "Limit, limited submission. It was limited, brother. I'm telling you." <laughs> we just hitting some um, of y'all comments right now. Yeah, just hanging with us. Communication. You cannot over communicate. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Um, what, uh, can, can I hit that, please? Listen, all y'all in a relationship, looking for a relationship. Whatever the case may be, you married like us. I don't care what it is. Over communicate, man. Listen, people laugh at me when I say when they ask me, "Hey, can you do this?" And I'm like, "Hey, I have to check the calendar, or I have to send my wife a calendar invite." And they laugh, and I'm like, "Listen, only if y'all understood how many areas that covers for us, mm -hmm. then y'all wouldn't laugh." We have so many moving pieces, and we have to be on the same page. We have to over communicate so it comes verbally and it comes through text and it also comes to calendar invite mm -hmm. so that we, we can remind our ourselves. Kids on invites. You got our kids <laughs> on invites and we make them check the email sure because is. we all have to be on the same page, bro. This is hard work, but because we understand what we're fighting for, it's necessary for us to do the work. Yeah, man. Period. Over communicate. Do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Mike said that approaches everything. Yeah, man. Yeah, we had to learn that. And that took us probably like six, seven years of marriage. Facts. Yeah, so. we just we just had to we had to learn that. Harry said that's energy. Oh, this is the question you're talking about when Harry said, but you have to respect her or she question. I guess he's trying to say you have to respect the fact that she's questioning it. I guess. Yeah. And and that's it. Because at first Jonathan didn't like me questioning nothing. Yeah, don't question me. Yeah. Don't that's question that me. old school mindset. That ain't for me. That's that. That's that. Uh, that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. That's misogyny. About, we talked about that hoodwink too. No, not really. I was about to give my plug for my book. Oh, but um, that's that misogyny that I, that I challenge in my follow up book, um, uh, that I'm actually writing right now. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Um, I'm, I don't want to give y'all the title because I think I want to change it a little bit. I'm kind of. I'm. I'm that's going okay. going back and forth with two of them, but I address that misogyny. I had sense of uh, 
a masculine entitlement that I think that we have where, you know, a woman has to know her place and she has to be at a certain place or level, a case may be. And, you know, I, I kind of challenge that because we got to evolve, man. We, we really do because you have to think of where some of this stuff came from. And it came from old ideals and ideologies that have uh, been passed down and we still perpetuate even to this day when women all honestly didn't have rights, mm -hmm. when they couldn't vote, when they, they had to stay home, they couldn't work. And you, you got to ask yourself, why do I still think that this is right? Yeah. What do I get out of it? How does it validate me as a man? Because in me evolving in these areas and challenging the status quo of what was right and how I saw it, mm -hmm. I don't feel less of a man if, when I pivot. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm losing masculinity when I say, okay, babe, you got this one. You go ahead. Or, or, or I can't solve something and I have to lean on my wife. I need, I need help, bro. I need a partner in his life to really help me out. And if this woman to the left of me, you're right. Um, can do that and be that for me why not you know the moments that i love what's that when you're trying to, when you think of something and you can't get the thoughts all the way and i gotta start asking you a bunch of questions for it to come together oh yeah 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 yeah. if i can't figure something out and uh eva will be like all right babe let's talk it out and she'll start asking questions and then i'll give an answer to each question and at the end of it i get it and I'm like, thank you, babe. She's like, you welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I like those. I like when you come with ideas and me questioning you. We either perfect the idea or it's better planned because I am able to present angles because I'm more detail oriented that maybe you can't catch or you can't see. Yeah. I it's like harmony, that. bro. It is. But I don't think, I think people sometimes miss out on that continuity because they don't allow themselves to be questioned. It's not to say that you're right or you can't get there, but it's really showing teamwork and that your perspective isn't the only one. And that somebody may have a different idea or a better approach, Ooh. but people be protecting their ideas if nothing yeah. can be better, better or there's no other way, oh, you know, I hate that so and, bad. Um, and, and, and it's, it really shows the maturity and, and growth and self-awareness when you're able to allow somebody else to come into your space to help you and vice versa. And Go I ahead, feel like girl. a lot of people in relationships don't know how to do that because like how we did for so many years, because I was fighting for a position, you know, to be seen by you and yes. to be respected by you. Yes. So I would try to outdo you. Well, if John can do it this way, I'm going to do it like this. And I'm going to tell him <laughs> how I got it like this. You know, and you'll be like, how you do it? I'm like, I tell you. Like, you know, whatever, because I'm I'm proud. And speaking of that, I hate when people don't like sharing their recipes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> like, uh... if the secret is cinnamon, just say cinnamon. I mean, <laughs> ooh, I just, it, it, to me, it's just... That is hilarious. If you ain't got no patent and you ain't selling it worldwide, you know, if I ask you what it is, just say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, jeez. I can't. I hit the mic. I get on you by hit the mic. Wait, that's, but that's yeah. funny. I can't tell you. Yeah, like, ain't that special? And then when, oh, my God, don't get me started on that. Okay. Or don't end up you doing it better next time. Oh, never mind. Speaking from personal experience. Breathe. <laughs> Breathe. Yes. But yeah, but yeah, I think that's cool. Yeah, I think that's um, cool. So, you know, I think leading is a part of being a team. It is. And um, a lot of people just don't figure that out. Teamwork is a dream work. Yeah. I was trying to find a song. I couldn't find a yeah, song. And, have, and I don't have no sound effects to add to that point. But yeah, so I think... I don't know. You got something else? No, I'm. I think I'm. I'm wrapped up. I'm wrapped up too, man. How you feeling? How your shoulder? I'm ready to get up. I <laughs> feel. You. Yeah. No. 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 I. I feel you. I don't. I don't want you to keep sitting down. Yeah. So let me. Let me put this on. You know. Got. Got to play our little. Our little intro. Outro. You feel me? Y'all. I appreciate. He said. Wait. Wait. Marcus oh, says you are the worst at sharing recipes. But I'm going where's but I'm cooking. Yeah, we was arguing. We was at work about who had the best fried chicken. And I told him, I said, listen, I make the best fried chicken. 
period. He like, does. And he said, you know, no. And I, I told him that he had a, uh, a marketing genius um, a name for a restaurant. I won't give it out. But just know, bro, if you don't trademark that, I'm coming for you. I love that he ain't idea. Do no restaurant. I what if I get the funding to be able to have somebody else be the face of it? You ain't gonna cook. Well, whatever. It's still a, it's still a genius. But name. Marcus, he did because he did, wasn't able to fry turkeys this Thanksgiving. That he did share his recipe with everybody that inboxed him that wanted him to fry a turkey. What's and I up? was so proud of What's him. What's up? Because I know at the end of the day that my recipe is still great. And if it's meant to be shared, it's meant to be shared. I'm not losing anything. I'm still going to have people buy from me regardless. But I don't mind sharing the wealth by all means. Why well, you say he's working on it now? Oh, 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 oh getting that thing going? He would not let up on that fried chicken. Jonathan does the best fried chicken. I am much going to lie. I haven't tasted the fried chicken that's better. And you know what? If y'all have had Jonathan's fried chicken with, with no skin... Can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, thanks, brother. He says awesome show. Oh, thank you, um, thank you. Thank y'all for all of you guys that have stayed on. Uh, we will continue to rock out. Like I said multiple times, please, please, please send in your questions to our email. I'm gonna give it out one more time. Legacy zero eight two seven eight seven at gmail.com or message us y'all y'all questions. Mm -hmm. We we thrive on that. We will answer them on the next live. Please pre-order our book, Hoodwinked, The, the Burden, Burden of, of Religion, religion. Yes. on Gumroad. If they go to gumroad.com, do they just type in? Or they can just see the link in, the, in our uh, group feed, or we'll be posting it to the public, um, our public website soon. We're just waiting a little longer, but it's going to be good. Facts. Thank y'all for y'all's oh, support. And don't forget to check out Danielle C C Caradine with D Essentials with these earrings um, embellished by Toy with some waist breeds. I did take mine off yes. in here. But it's great. And some lip gloss with A and K Beauty. Turn that off now. I've been playing too long. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yes. Uh, so thank y'all for the support. I'm trying to remember the other things that we have said that we, I'm trying to wrap up to the end. Uh, remember, we are on all podcasting platforms. Mm -hmm. um, wherever you get your podcasts, check those out. Uh, look out for the book to be posted public so you guys can support the early purchase of it. Yep. Um, the group members. Oh, remember the group members. I challenge you guys again. We're trying to get to a certain place so we can start giving y'all some stuff to show y'all that we love y'all. Um, I challenge you to invite 10 people to the group, if yeah. not more, so we can get to this place so we can start showing y'all that we appreciate y'all and be a blessing to you. Um, what am I missing? That's it for me. That's it? Yeah. All right, y'all. We love y'all. Happy Sunday. Till the next time. Peace easy. Bye -bye. <laughs>